Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 389. We're continuing with our lesson theme, Reality Transit. This will be part 8. We're talking about the changes that are going to take place, transitioning from the current reality to the reality that will ultimately lead to the tribulation era and the establishment of the Lord's kingdom. We are focusing at this point on the reality of the darkness element. Scripture indicates hidden in the darkness regions of the secondary creation are great mysteries. The darkness reality shrouds many mysteries according to the scriptures. Turn to the book of Job, 12th chapter, verse 22. Job 12 chapter, verse 22. <clears throat> he discovereth, he discovereth deep things out of darkness. The word discovereth there comes from a Hebrew term, gala, which means reveal. So basically it's saying he reveals deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death. So he makes known the reality of the things of the darkness elements. <clears throat> Daniel, second chapter. Just before you move to Daniel, second chapter. Yes. Darkness, sorry, shadow of death. Mm -hmm. Since we know that uh, one of the attributes of darkness is death, mm -hmm. why is the word shadow employed? What do we understand? It? <clears throat> well, here is referring to a region in uh, the darkness reality. Okay you have what's called death, <clears throat> which is a region yep. that humans go to as a part of the judgment that they bring about on themselves. There's a borderland surrounding it, a periphery, just beyond it, called the shadow of death, in which a soul can go and then return. David talks about in the book of Psalms, where I walk through the valley in the shadow of death. So I'm at a region. <clears throat> And in this particular capacity, what the Job is saying here is God reveals the reality of these places. Okay. It's all in the darkness element, okay. the darkness state. And we said there are two, two realities, light and darkness. This right. is one aspect of it. So the scripture is telling us <clears throat> that God will reveal the mysteries, the hidden things that are located in darkness. Daniel, second chapter, verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. So here we're talking here about revelation knowledge that God will impart about the mysteries of the darkness reality. Let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture indicates there arose one individual whom Elohim so favored that he commissioned YHVH to favor him with the understanding of the secrets of darkness. And that individual's name was Cyrus. Turn to Isaiah 44, verse 24 to 28.
Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. Let's talk about Elohim. And he that formed thee from the womb. Talking about YHVH. I am the Lord that maketh all, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself, <coughs> that frustrateth the tokens of the liars, and maketh diviners mad, that turneth wise men backward, and maketh their knowledge foolish, that comforteth the word of his servant, and performeth the counsel of his messengers, that saith to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be inhabited, and to the cities of Judah you shall be built, and I will raise up the decayed places. Now, <clears throat> he goes on to say, he's talking about the things that he's able to do. That saith to the deep, Be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. That saith of Cyrus, my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. So here we have the position of this man Cyrus, who is not even an Israelite, he's a Persian, who has God's profound favor. He says, I'm going to use Cyrus to raise up Jerusalem and reestablish my, my nation, my people of Israel. Now, <clears throat> drop down to Isaiah 45, 1 to 3. He continues on about how he's going to favor Cyrus. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates, and the gate shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I... The Lord which call thee by thy name am the God of Israel. So what we find here is Elohim favors Cyrus. Now he goes on, if you continue to read this, to find out that Cyrus doesn't know anything about him in this life. Mm. So the inference is that in eternity Cyrus had a relationship with Elohim commensurate to perhaps Abraham's relationship with Elohim. But of course from the foundation of the world. But Cyrus is not prototokis. I know, but okay. But from After the eternal the perspective, yeah. yes. And in this relationship, Elohim <coughs> basically commits YHVH to favor Cyrus in this life. So what happened, turn to Daniel, and we're going to see what we find in Daniel. Daniel was taken captive as a young man by the Babylonians. Daniel lived beyond the time of the Babylonian captivity into the Persian defeat of Babylon. The first king of Persia was Cyrus. When Cyrus became king, he made Daniel the leader over the wise men, basically ruling the country. The second decree that he made was that the Jews would be free to go back and raise up the temple at Jerusalem. And what we find here is that the Lord has initiated this from eternity. We also find 
that the, the ability of Cyrus to receive the mysteries of the darkness reality made Persia the wealthiest nation on the earth at that time. Cyrus was able, uh, was able to use the understanding to take the treasures out of darkness and apply them to make prosperity of the, the nation that he was given uh, rule over. Hmm. Is this somehow um, commensurate with Solomon's understanding, Solomon's knowledge? Uh, in a way, yes. But what we find, Solomon didn't have the knowledge of darkness. He had um, IGH's wisdom mm -hmm. of the things of the earth. What we find here, if God gives you the, secret, the secrets of the darkness region, darkness is an element of negativity, adversity. But if God instills a wisdom of the things of darkness in you, you're going to take those negative things and make them positive. So would you describe it as a manipulation of darkness? You can describe it as a restoration, of the utility of the things in darkness. Okay, to bring about to something which is like, gotcha. Okay. Because God's behind it. Right. I don't have the scripture in Daniel, but that's basically the story. Cyrus released the Israelites to go back <clears throat> under Ezra and rebuild Jerusalem and the temple and everything else. You read about that in the book of Ezra, and Nehemiah, and some parts of Daniel. Daniel <clears throat> basically remained in Persia. He didn't go back to Jerusalem. He died in, in Persia, Persia. Okay. because that's the position that he was put in with so great responsibilities that he had over the Jews that remained in Persia kept him there. Right. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates <clears throat> in the darkness regions of the earth habitations, dwelling places of evil, rabidly evil intelligences exist. Psalm 74, verse 20. Psalm 74, 20. Have respect unto the covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Habitations comes from a Hebrew word meaning dwelling places. Cruelty comes from a Hebrew word which you're familiar with, Hamas, mm -hmm. which means violence, cruel hatred. So what he's saying here. Have respect unto the covenant. In other words, this is YHVH telling them, because of the covenant that I've given you, the Mosaic covenant, you have protection from the intelligences of darkness that will afflict you if you continue to follow the directions, directives of the laws of <clears throat> the statutes that I've given you. You will continue in a, a protection from them. If you don't, then come under their influence. Mm. Now, Scripture strongly indicates at the beginning of sorrows, the surface world, and even before the beginning of sorrows, the surface world is going to be turned over to these evil beings as part of the judgment. Turn to Ezekiel 7, verses 20 to 21.
as for the beauty of his ornament, talking about the planet, he set it in majesty. But they, the human race, made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. The human race is going to lose its right to dominion over the surface world. Mm. Verse 21, and, and, I will give it into the hands of the strangers, those who are strange from the surface world, dwellers of darkness, for prey, and to the wicked of the earth, for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. The wicked of the earth, those that dwell in the darkness regions, and you can see that now with the appearance here and there of the cryptoids mm -hmm. stuff that strike terror in the hearts of people they all have a cohabit in they see them basically at night in the darkness uh national parks isolated places things of darkness things come out of the darkness and um they afflict you know, dogmen, Yeti. Uh, if you read the works, the writings of um, Richard Shaver, uh, the Shaver mystery, hmm. talks about the Dero. Yes, yes, that's one thing, yes. Okay. And uh, it talks about the their cavern dwellers. Aren't that the, isn't that the same group of people? Who wrote the time machine? H.G. Wells. Didn't he name them Dura? No, he named them Molarks. Okay. But it's patterned after, after that, the Shaver right. mystery. I've been hearing about uh, mimics. I guess they're a type of cryptoid who speak in your own voice. So you might be in your room hearing your voice coming from somewhere. Yes. Or the voice of someone that you know. It's also called the trickster. That's what it's called? The same the same. But uh, the entity. Indians long before that. Right. Uh, because they, it's a spirit being that does things uh, almost to uh, belittle the humans that it comes in contact with. <laughs> it gets pleasure out of that. Right. So the, it goes way back to the Indians' time, sure. before the settlers even got to the, this, the, this country. And they, right. they called it the trickster, huh. the spirit that does things to get you to believe one thing, and then it shows you how stupid you were. To, right, for believing it. Yeah. Uh, there's so much taking place now. <clears throat> When you look at the at YouTube about these intelligences and they're all evil, they're all wicked, and how they're beginning to afflict people. They talk about campsites where people disappear and uh, things that are happening that are uh, causing all sorts of uh, confusion and terror in the hearts of people. Well, let's the judgment that's coming on the human race. Yeah. These things are going to be released. So you could, if you imagine what's happening now, you take a look at a couple of months from now, a year from now, this place is going to be a horror zone for people that aren't protected. Who living hell, sure. Which brings us to the next principle. The next principle, scripture indicates the openings to the, these abodes of darkness begin with the appearing of the pit on the earth's surface terrifying people in its vicinity you see holes opening up all over the place uh, the earth giving way to these tremendous uh, sinkholes yep. uh, things like Mel's hole yes. uh, <clears throat> that the big people can't comprehend the significance of it goes beyond the the mine melts holes a place where it has no bottom and uh, things take place when you throw a rock or a heavy object in it you never hear it hitting the bottom right. they said that uh, people have seen things coming up out of the hole Mel's hole and running off into, uh, into the, the landscape. Sure. So this is an instance of what you're having here, the connection between the darkness reality and the surface world, which is proceeding just before the judgment, the beginning of Sarah. Mm. Turn to Isaiah 24, 
verses 17 to 18. Now this is going to happen when um, the darkness regions reach their zenith of contact with the surface world. Everything is going to open up. Fear in the pit and the snare upon the own inhabitant of the earth. Mm. Fear is a creature, uh, a spirit being, that at this point in time dominates by its influence people live in a spirit of fear well it's a, a spirit a state of existence personified at this time it's going to manifest in its fullness as, as a being yes no. what i'm what i'm saying is more as a being at that point than it is now yes right. fear in the pit and the snare are upon the own inhabitant of the earth it has come to pass that he that fleeth from the noise of the fear or the sound of the fear shall fall into the pit. He that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare, for the windows from on high are open in the foundations of the earth and do shake. So it's talking about a time when the heavens, the subterranean regions are going to be fully connected to the surface world. Tribulation era. Okay. And Darkness covers the world. People live in abject terror from the non-human intelligences that are running rampant across the surface, terrorizing, killing, slaughtering the human race. It's going to be a state of terror. That's why they seek the protection of the gods of the Fourth Empire. That's one reason. Right. So the windows, bars, gates, and doors which are currently in place, are pulled back and opened. Everything. At the same time as the Fourth Empire rises. Um, yes. They, they become completed, because what, what you're seeing now is the beginning of, of that, this. Right. At this point, yeah, the, the Fourth Empire is firmly entrenched, sure. and the connections are firmly uh, open at this point. That's why when Paul talks about the mystery of iniquity is at work, but it won't continue, it won't reach its fullness until the restrainer is taken away. Does that imply that the Fourth Empire controls the windows, bars, gates, and doors until the Protodicus take care of it? No. Just God, that they're allowed God to... God controls co it. Yeah, throughout that whole period. So he immediately allows them to use it for whatever period of when time. It, when the spirit is taken from the earth, right. then the, the, the evil will sweep over like a flood tide. Right. In its fullness. But what I'm saying is, the Father allows well, Elohim, allows them, the Fourth Empire, to use it yes. until such time as he's ready for them not to use it. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Which will be the ascension of uh, the, the, the Protodicus. Yes, yeah. yes. That's when you read Revelation 13, I mean Revelation 12, where the, the, the enemy, turn over to Revelation 12. As we're turning, so that implies then at the end of the gathering, when the Protodicus teachers are elevated, mm -hmm. they take control of the windows, bars, gates, and doors at that point. Yes, okay. that's part of their inheritance. So then the period is between the beginning of sorrows and the end of the gathering, that the enemy is able to use it. Well, the enemy doesn't reach its fullness till after the rapture. Are you saying that the enemy can continue to use it after the Protodicus teachers have been elevated? To a degree. Because the Luciferian Fourth Empire is on the earth after the teachers are elevated. They start at the time of the beginning of sorrows, but they don't reach the fullness of the ability to control the darkness elements, the things that make the connection, until after the Prototokis is taken off the earth. So then... The so they're not going to be allowed to interfere with God's okay. master plan. So then the Prototokis, even though they have inherited the control of the windows, gates, bars, and doors mm -hmm. at the end of the gathering mm -hmm. are told, essentially, by the Father, allow the Fourth Empire to do whatever they're going to do. Okay. Sure, sure. Now, you see in Revelation 12, 
first four. Revelation 12, verse 1, is still through the third part of the stars of heaven. This gives us the understanding of the power that's being given to the fourth empire under Lucifer. Mm -hmm. He is able to imprison those of the, the, the star group. He's able to take over the next level of heavens and mm -hmm. initiate his mercantile system. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones, let me ask a question. Yes? Okay, this is the first place that we've seen not the hand, not the arm, but the tail. Now, what is the significance? Is that the weakest part of, of Lucifer? He doesn't need to put in his arm or his, his hand? No, it's talking about the connection that they have to the dragon. He is in a position of dominance. He's calling the shots. He's the one that's controlling everything. When it talks about the tail, it's talking about the trailing end of Lucifer. If it was talking about the head, it would put them in a position of equality, of the ability to influence. Okay. The tail is telling us that he is calling the shots over them, and he is directing them to do what he wants them to do when he wants them to do it. Right. So they are lesser Luciferians. In terms of dynamis, is, is what we're understanding. Yes. Okay. Yes, he's given. This is his time to shine, if you will. That's why you read in Deuteronomy, "Thou shall be the head, not the tail." Okay. So it's talking about followers, gotcha. and leaders. Gotcha. We have four. <clears throat> okay. His tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So this is the ensemble of Luciferian angelic hosts, if you will, engage the star group, take them down for Lucifer. And they cast him to the earth and the dragon, this is Lucifer, stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now this is given in, in, symb in some symbolical terms as I see the scripture. Lucifer's got all this power now <clears throat> and he's going to use it against the prototokos to keep them from performing the prophecy of Genesis 3.15. He knows they're going to come to power. They're going to dominate the creation. He's going to assert his power against them to keep it from happening, symbolized by standing over the woman to kill it, right. child, as soon as it's born. So that raises the question, is he given that power at that point in time, or does he already have it inherent in him? He hasn't. He hmm. got it when the, 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 the tail became attached to the dragon and he was given the ability to now assert himself over the stars yeah okay uh, over the creation so so he's just trying to extend his authority at this at, at particular junction over the prototokens like he's got over agreed the but the point is that the power is given to him at the point that he took over or uh, attacked the star the group area yes okay yes but what he doesn't understand is the power of the ones that he's trying to dominate far exceed anything of course so do you describe that as him going further than the remit that god the father has given him for that period of time he can't he may try but he can't well that's what i'm saying to you in the fact that he's standing over the child mm -hmm. of course he can't but he tried to do so yeah sure and I'm, I'm saying that implies that the power that was given to him to attack the star group the father allowed that yes but obviously doesn't allow him to attack sure. the group. but he doesn't know that right because there's nothing there that's more powerful than what's been given to him. to him yeah so we see him standing over there as soon as the child is born what for the man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron so he's giving you immediately the authority the child has <clears throat> And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. The caught up, every time you see the word caught up, it's referring to the Holy Spirit and his power. So immediately he's standing there and he's going to get a full blast of the power of the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Because what's being taken in when the child is born, that's, that's symbolic of the glorification, sure. the rapture. Sure. So he's going to get kicked in the teeth 
uh, unexpected, uh, unexpectedly brutalized by a source that he had no idea would come into uh, existence. Uh, but evidently he had, he had an inkling of something, which is why he was standing over in the first place. Well, he knew something was going to happen, right. sure. He, he could detect. Right, but just didn't know what. But he couldn't, no, he didn't, no, no way. Yeah. Anyway, so this is letting us understand that what we're talking about, the power of darkness, is going to assert itself over all things except the power of the prototokens. Yes. Will shut it down every time it comes into contact. But the power of the prototokens is going to be taken away right. from the earth. So Which they will, will dominate all things till the prototokens return. 